Hey everyone, Sawmill Charlie. I'm here in my back porch. This is going to be my honey house for a couple weeks. I'm in the process of starting to harvest my honey. I wanted to show you the different uh, tools that I use. And I want to start out with my uncapping tank. I use a high butler uncapping tank that has the ribs inside of it that hold the frames in place. I chose this uh, tank over the other units that you can buy from the different supply houses. Because of that, over the years I have used the comb capper uh, product here, this yellow thing that actually fits on a five gallon bucket. It snaps around the lid or around the rim. And it has this slot in here where you can put a medium or deep in there. And it has these holes where the ears of those two frames will fit in. And I like that because most of all my frames are totally plastic. The nail system that's used for the wood does work, but a lot of times those plastic frames will slip off because it can't really penetrate the plastic. So what I did was I took two wooden frames I screwed this comb uncapper platform to it, and then I'm able to take these two frames, put it into the high butler that has the ribs on the side and hold these frames in place without letting it move around. And that way I can uncap my plastic frames safely without any uh, problems. And I found that the uh, tank from Hive Butler is very nice. Here's the inside. I'm not sure if you can really see it. It does have these ribs on the side. It does have a hole in it. There's the two tanks. One sits on top of the other and it has a filtration sieve in there, which is a piece of food grade plastic that has holes bored in it so the honey can drip out of your uncappings and keep the capping separated up in the top tank. And then, like I say, I put the comb uncapper here in the tank and then I'm safely able to uncap my cappings off of the uh, frames. Now what I use is a Max Ant uncapping plane and it's not a hot knife. It, this is heated but it's an uncapping plane from Max Ant. Uh, let me get a little closer and show you the blade. It has this copper blade right here and you might be able to see it you can actually set the depth of how much wax it's going to cut off your frames and it works very well I also use a count on capping scratcher when it's needed what's nice about this is is I do not go from the top to the bottom of the frame the length of the frame I go from side to side. I make several passes up the frame and you regulate the depth with this by moving the handle either towards the frame for less cut or raising it up and it will cut a little bit deeper into the wax. And what I found with this is is that when the comb is drawn out and there's let's say a, a dip in the comb, it's not perfectly flat, this will go into that little dip and uncap that area there without too much problems where a straight hot knife actually will skip over that because it can't actually get into that lower part of the wax capping. So that's one of the advantages of this unit. Uh, it is a little heavier than a uncapping hot knife, but um, I find it to be a, a very good tool. And like I said, I just have a normal unscratching uh, capping uh, fork here. This one here happens to be uh, kind of an aluminum with the uh, metal spikes on it. You can buy them with the plastic handles. This has got a wooden handle and everything. Then uh, also about the Hive Butler, it can be multi-purpose use. Uh, it does come with a lid. This lid here is their vented lid. This uh, unit, you can have the two different tanks. You can use it as a swarm catcher. 
You can put your frames in here with those uh, support grooves where they won't flop around. They'll stay in place. You can store your frames in here. The vented lid is for catching swarms so they get air. There is another lid. It looks just like this, but it's a solid lid. You can use that to actually store your frames in there or transport your frames from one location to another. And of course, this unit here is also designed to be a uh, uncapping tank. And it does have a honey gate on the side of it where you can let the honey out as it drains out of your cappings. So let me show you my extractor at this time. Here's my extractor. It is a Man Lake extractor. I bought it about four years ago or more. It is an 18 frame extractor, powered of course. Uh, I use a regular five gallon bucket. I use the common $40 stainless steel uh, honey strainer. Uh, it has a coarse strainer and then a fine strainer. I have actually a few of those. They do get choked up with the uh, wax particles and bee parts especially the coarse, and I just use a hose with a sprayer on the end of it to blow all that stuff out into the yard. You never want to put that down your sink or anything like that because it'll choke up your sink with uh, all that trash. Uh, it does a good job as far as the extractor goes. Um, if I was going to buy another one, I think that I would look strongly at a licensed 20 frame extractor. Uh, they seem to be much heavier built. Uh, the steel, especially the legs and stuff. This here, legs are sort of bent and press formed where I believe the ones that I've seen some friends of mine have, um, the steel legs are made out of actual um, eighth inch steel that is uh, solid and it's welded. And underneath there are crossbars to give it more rigidity. This also is a radial extractor, so I don't have to flip the uh, frames around. But uh, it does a good job all in all, and uh, that's what I use. All right, I'm going to show you how I uncap my frames. As you can see, the comb uncapper platform here holds your frame in place. I still support it with my hands up here when I am uncapping. And I'm going to go ahead and use my Max Ant uncapping plane. I usually start at the bottom. I pull across and I kind of dump the wax as it curls up into this bucket right here or kind of a cradle, I guess you would call it. So I start down here and just drag it straight across. And as you can see, it's just like that. And I just drop it off into the bottom. As you can see, you can go and just touch the little area that needs to be uncapped. The wax is paper thin. That's what I like. Not too much cappings in the tank. Just enough to uncap that frame. And you kind of do it on an angle here and get that little corner out. Same way down here and turn it around. It's not totally capped here, but I did do the shake test. If it doesn't drip out, it is good enough. I will test the uh, water content with a uh, fractometer. And that is pretty much it, and you just keep on going. I usually have a wooden uh, hot cutting board, and then I normally just transfer it right over here to the extractor, and then I pick up another frame right out of the box, right, which is located right here. And I am ready to go to cut more wax cappings off, just like that. You just take and lay it right over there, comes off. It's about 
less than an eighth of an inch, but heavier than a sixteenth as far as the thinness of the wax. The main thing about this uncapper is that if you get caught where the wax or honey gets caramelized on the knife, you've got to clean it off or it just will not cut the wax off of your frame very good. The downside, I guess, the one thing that I wish they would have done was put a electric heat regulator for this knife. It does not have a regulator and you really have to be very careful about it getting overheated, especially when you're not using it. You should turn it off. It does have a inline switch for the knife and uh, there's the switch. You just can turn it off. Like I say, I just lay it over there. Now what I also do is I try to put the combs in the extractor and I kind of feel the weight of the comb and I try to balance the extractor out. So if I have a heavy comb and a light comb, well I want to, it's, the extractor is divided in three quadrants. I try to put a heavy comb in each quadrant and then if I find a light one and I put the light one in, in, in one quadrant and try to make sure that all the weight is equalized in the extractor so it doesn't sit there and shake off balance. Uh, if you put all the weight on one side it'll be more severe. If you can try to balance it out it will do a whole much better. And then also when you first start it up, start out real slow kind of sling the honey out and kind of equalize the weight of the combs by slinging the honey out and as it gets less honey in the combs then you can continually increase the speed of the basket to where you can uh, get all the honey out with the high speed. Another thing is is the top that I put on here is clear plastic so I use a little LED light and I put it right on top of the plastic shining straight down into the uh, tank and I can actually light up the tank and see the honey being slung out of the comb. So when you get to the point where you only see little uh, droplets coming out ever so little bit then you know that you've gotten all the honey out of your combs and out of that load as much as possible. So that's some of the tips and tricks that I use and do in order to extract my honey. So until next time, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share my videos with your friends, and have fun with your bees. And I hope that you all have a great honey season and make hundreds of pounds of honey.